My name is Grant Lambeau. I'm an EMT basic. I've been with Superior since September of 2018, and I've been working as an EMTB since uh, December of 2018. I was in New York for six weeks. Uh, we were there to help Fire Department New York EMS with their overwhelming amount of 911 calls. Um, when we got there, they were running about 7,900 uh, EMS calls a day. We were one of about 250 ambulances helping out with that. There were 10 ambulances from Superior at first, and then there were two more basic trucks from Indiana that came later on. We got a 72-hour list. Uh, it lists out everything you need uh, to be self-sufficient for about the first 72 hours. A sleeping bag, toiletries, uh, protein bars, water. So a lot of that I keep on hand uh, at home, just in case uh, I get the call from Dave. We get about 24 hours notice before we leave. The first time we went to an ER, it was it was astounding. There was just such dismay. There were there was the nurses were freaking out, the doctors were freaking out. You had people dying in the hallway. You had people dead dead people next to alive people. The system was just overrun and there were not enough supplies or personnel to keep up with it and we didn't know how to how to help these people either normal treatments uh like albuterol and ventilators were not working it really depended on the day and the area we were we were in quieter parts of queens for a little while that was about maybe uh one or two calls three calls a day and then the more busy parts were about five or six um and it was it was everything it was it was emotionally distressed people there were drug and alcohol abuse, a lot of cardiac calls, uh, hypertension, diabetes, and we also had a lot of COVID calls too. So right off the bat, dispatch gives you um, the reason you're going. And so anytime they said a sick fever cough call, you immediately just assumed it was COVID. Anything respiratory related, any chest pain, any fever, you just, you assumed it was COVID. So when you get out of the ambulance, you put on your N95, you put on a gown, you put on some, some eyewear, and you just you take every precaution that you can to, to keep your substances in you and their substances away from you. It was just being in such a different area. I mean, New York City is an extremely complex, and so being able to navigate through there um, on calls and, and then just dealing with all different types of people was a real melting pot of people and you got a lot of a lot of different languages and a lot of different ethnicities and them being able to understand you and you communicate with them was a challenge at times. Working with people from all over different companies different fire departments was really cool and just seeing how how things are different in different places and so being able to see that how different things are all across the lower 48 was really cool. Most of the feedback we got was a lot of love from people. A couple different times we were posted together in different parking lots, about uh, 10 ambulances. People would drop off food and pizzas, and that, that happened a lot. There was this one uh, couple that brought their dog over every day. They would text us, say, hey, are you at the park? We'd say, yeah, they bring their dog by so we could get some, uh, some nice downtime. Usually, it, within the medical field, things trickle down to us. It goes, it goes from the hospitals, the higher ups, to nurses, to techs, to us. And while we were there, we were the first people getting evidence-based medicine protocol changes. The first week there, they decided, okay, albuterol is not helping, don't give it, do this and stuff. And then they, when the cardiac arrest protocol changed, it was because they said, you need to stay on scene, you need to work them for 20 minutes on scene and give it your best without doing any movement, any transporting, and just try to get ROSC. And if you can't, you can't. And then you're not going to the hospital and wasting resources. That was cool. That was the first time EMS was the people that they were looking at first and the people that were getting the protocol changes first. It was it was nice to see. It it, it let us be be more providers than responders because the things they were having us do impacted their their entire care plan and not just stabilizing them to get them to the hospital. Oh yeah, for sure. It was it was a great experience. Um, being able to meet people was cool. Being able to help out was cool. It was kind of like the reason I went is if we had what was happening in New York happen here, I would want people to come. And I would want people to come help me. And so who am I to, to put my own safety and, and my family and whatnot here and say, no, I don't want to go. You know, you, no one picks this job for their personal gain. It, it's all about helping other people. So it, if that's why you're here, then, then yeah, deploy and, and go help out.
you know, if you would want help to come to you, then you should be able to go help other people.